Welcome to TI Precision Labs. In this series, we're going to discuss board layout recommendations for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, or PCIe. PCIe is a high-performance interconnect that enables high bandwidth, scalability, error detection, and hot swap functionality across multiple clock boundaries. To accommodate high bandwidth and scalability, there are multiple lanes running at high data rates, such as 16 gigabits per second or higher. Earlier in this series, we discussed signal integrity challenges in PCIe. Please see the links at the end of the presentation if you would like to go back and review. Special attention needs to be paid to the board layout to preserve signal integrity in PCIe applications. The PCIe specification calls for 85 ohm plus or minus 20% differential trace impedance. This is done to match the connector trace impedance. On the other hand, if the PCIe signals are on the same PCB with no connector, then we need to have a closely coupled 100 ohm, 100 ohm plus or minus 20% differential trace, since CPUs or ASICs are typically designed for 100 ohm impedance. The board stack-up material should be used to meet this requirement. In PCIe applications, it is possible that two adjacent differential pairs may be running at different data rates, or they could be out of phase. Therefore, to reduce cross-coupling, it is necessary to have spacing between differential traces of at least four times the differential pair reference plane height. For strip line traces, it is recommended to have a spacing of at least three times the dielectric height. Differential trace length mismatch has a direct impact on the high speed signal integrity. Mismatch differential pairs cause duty cycle distortion, reducing eye opening width, and thus lowering the signal performance. When running long differential pairs, it is recommended to have the traces of the PCB angled. This is because the PCB fiber grain and parallel traces can cause reference plane impedance continuity. When there is an impedance mismatch, trace compensation should be done at the point of the mismatch versus at the end of the trace. If the signals in this example pair are running out of phase, they can magnetically affect each other through coupling. In some situations, it is desirable to run single-ended or loosely coupled traces due to an intra-pair length mismatch. In this type of situation, if the length is greater than a quarter wavelength, or 100 mils at PCIe Gen 4 speeds, then the trace width should be increased for the length of these loosely coupled traces. The PCIe Gen 4 specification limits a channel to a maximum of 28 dB of channel loss. In a PCIe link, there is loss associated with the connectors, the vias, and the CPU or endpoint packaging. Assuming a given trace has a loss of 1.1 dB per inch, this means we are limited to a maximum length of about 16 inches of PCB trace. Sig Signals traveling through a PCB with vias could be described as a car traveling down the highway at full speed until it comes across some bumps in the road. Vias in a PCB cause impedance discontinuity, which causes signal reflection and can reduce signal quality. The first rule of thumb is to avoid vias if possible. It is recommended to limit the number of vias in a PCIe trace to six vias at Gen 4 data rates. From a signal loss perspective, one to two vias is equivalent to one to two inches of differential trace loss. However, vias could have worse effects simply because of its imperfect anti-pad causing reflections. Ground stitching close to the via causes a lower impedance to ground, improving signal transition. It is recommended to provide inner layer voids around the vias, meaning there should not be a ground or power layer around the via. Distance from the via to these layers is normally determined using 3D simulations. PCIe specifications require AC coupling caps to be placed on the TX signals. However, pads due to the AC coupling caps can provide parasitic capacitance and thus cause impedance drop. To avoid this impedance drop, Typically, we provide voids under the AC coupling caps and its body. This should be done through as many planes as possible to make sure there is no impedance impact. When creating a high-speed board layout, it seems natural to place AC coupling caps in a row, as shown in this image. However, this arrangement has two negative side effects. A. Voids under these caps provide a discontinuity on the ground plane under it, increasing ground impedance. B. Since these caps are in one row, this practice also increases possibility of signal traces being too close to one another, causing noise cross-coupling. Therefore, it is a good practice to stagger or separate these caps from one another, 
reducing ground plane break, and lowering noise coupling. It is a good practice to provide ground and power plane voids under AC coupling caps to reduce the parasitic capacitance from causing impedance drop. Similarly, the location of the AC coupling cap is also important. Even though we have a void under the cap in this scenario, TDR observations have shown that there is still some impedance drop. To remedy this to some extent, we can place AC coupling caps within a quarter wavelength of the impedance discontinuity. Close to the chem connector or finger edge is a good place for these caps. If there is a chip-to-chip -chip connection, then this capacitor should be placed on the receiver side where the ESD structure is more dominant. During PCIe protocol negotiations, each lane's signal conditioning settings is adjusted separately from one another. Due to the fast slew rate, it is recommended to provide isolation between channels as much as possible to reduce crosstalk or cross-coupling effects. The first rule of thumb is to provide ground, fill, provide ground fill along the ground stitches to reduce current return path and shield one differential pair from another. Ground stitching distance is a function of the signal rise or fall time, and it is recommended to be within 100 mils. Secondly, voids under high-speed pads reduces parasitics that can cause bandwidth limitation. Thirdly, we need to provide as much distance between two adjacent differential traces as possible while we have ground fill and stitching to provide a shorter current path and a higher degree of isolation. Thank you for joining us, and if you have any questions about high-speed board layout, please visit our engineer support forums at e2e.ti.com and look for us in the interface section. If you're interested in learning more about PCIe and its signal integrity challenges, please check out this presentation in our TIPL.